Hey everyone, welcome back to Aussie Wristwatch. I'm Jessica and today I'm going to talk a little bit about, yeah, you guessed it, grey market watch prices. Now, I'm no expert. Uh, I'm just doing a little bit of research myself and going on a little journey. So don't hold me to anything. Uh, feel free to comment below and let's get the conversation started. All right, before we get cracking, uh, wrist check is my Panerai Pam 422 47mm. You guys know I love this watch because I wear it a lot, uh, but that is what I've got on today. <laughs> so let's get cracking into it because a few things I want to know here. Am I ever any closer to getting the call from my AD about um, my Rolex somewhere on a no date? Or am I going to have to capitulate at some point and get one on the second hand grey market? I don't know. I'm still torn about that. But let's have a chat about it anyway, shall we? So the prestige market. Rolex. You know, for some, I, I kind of call them a, a humble watchmaker. Uh, turned into like the brand synonymous with luxury and prestige. Despite arguably not being at the top of that pyramid. I think Adrian did a really good video on this quite some time back. So you should watch that. And um, I just, because uh, you know, I think he's right, like AP, Patek and Vacheron, definitely the apex of the pyramid. So where's Rolex? Well, it's not prestige, but it is by virtue of its scarcity and popularity, which I think is part of Rolex's genius and charm. Now. I would like to think by now that most of you know I'm not a watch investor per se. That is to say I appreciate watches and I buy what I like. It doesn't really matter whether it's going to give me a return, which is the worst thing an investor can do. One of my friends told me on the weekend I should be buying Rolexes and not an Avatimer because they depreciate and a Rolex doesn't. Well, yes, of course, but it's not purely an investment buy for me in that regard. So we all know they appreciate, right? Um, and as I intimated earlier, there's been a many, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff written about Rolex and, and the value of them. So I, had a I found a really good article online, actually. There's many, many articles, as is uh, videos on the declining watch market, what that means, where it's going. Everyone's put their two bobs worth, including me. And I thought the Bloomberg article was a pretty good discussion because it was based off a report from um, an economist at Morgan Stanley. So we all know prices surged in 2021 and the first quarter of 2022, and it remained strong for quite some time. However, there's been some decreases. So for example, and these are broad numbers, people. So don't get on the comments and tell me blah, 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 blah understand that they are broad numbers but they are demonstrative of what's happening in the economy more broadly and also the watch market so the detona chronograph which is tracked by watch charts has fallen on average over the series of pieces 21 percent since april the pp nautilus the references on average again are down 19 percent on the secondary market and the AP Royal Oaks, again, the references clumped together, not just one individual reference, on average have declined 15%. Now, Morgan Stanley's Edouard Aubin has said that they have seen an increase in watch inventory in the secondary market um, year on year, and in particular more recently. And investors and secondhand dealers are beginning to offload more stock. So that, that kind of just means that there's it's basic, basic principles of economy that even I can understand. We've got an influx of stock. Um, it's driving down the price, okay? So the most in-demand models, the big three Rolexes, uh, sorry, the big three are Rolex, Patek, and Audemars Piguet, or AP. They count for about 71% of the total traded value of the secondary luxury watch market. It's pretty extraordinary. Prices um, for the watch charts overall market index, which includes other brands, 
fell by 9% in the third quarter compared to the second. It's a pretty big drop. So an example of the decline is the Vacheron Constantin Overseas Reference V500, sorry, 4500V110A-B483. It's a mouthful. Still sports watch model. And the Richemont owned brand, it has a retail price of 22,500 and it peaked at 39,000 on the secondary market in April. It's now available to be purchased for 30,900. So, I mean, let's face it guys, that's still a huge premium over retail, but a significant drop on the secondary market. So you're kind of in the middle. <laughs> now, Interestingly, and this is what I find quite fascinating, so I get like where my friend's coming from in terms of buying watches as investments, right? So he goes, secondary, he doesn't say, sorry, the, the more, Morgan Stanley report goes on to say that secondary watch market prices have declined less than many other asset classes during the past 18 months. While secondhand prices of the 30 most traded Rolex watches fell 8% this quarter, they were still up a cumulative 21% since January 2021. So we're still not down to, but anyway, compares favorably to the S&P 500 stock market index, which fell flat while Bitcoin is down 34%. Yep, don't need to tell me because I know from my investment. Now the report identifies a few Swiss watch brands that are bucking the price decline trend. Rolex and Patek prices fell. LVMH owned Bulgari models rose 1%. Why? I don't know. Richemont's A. Lenger and Sun increased 3%. And Gerard Perigo, a brand that was purchased and managed led by up by Kering SA this year, climbed 5%. Again, why? I, you know, I wonder what people's thoughts are on why that's occurring. Let's talk about the main thing we all want to talk about here. Should we buy? This is my opinion. This is not financial advice. Do not go out and buy because I say to, I'm not going to actually say that, but it's for you to make the decision. It's for us here to have the discussion. So we have a big price reduction and I'm talking about prices that are inflated as of January 2021 and that peak of April. Okay, but it hasn't crashed. At least for me, a crash would have to see the retail price bottom out. And if, in fact, retail prices are going up year on year, it's inflationary. The luxury watch market itself is still very strong and it still can't, you know, I mean, for example, I can't rock up to my Rolex AD and just go, I'll have what she's having. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> So there's still a demand there. But if you really want a Rolex and it's on your wish list, like it's your grail watch, maybe now, maybe now is the time to think about buying or buying, if you, or at least waiting it out a little longer. Cause I think it will drop still. And I've just based that on pff, my non-professional opinion, but just logic. And even if it did go up slightly, you know, it's still not at the peak that it was, that it was, you know, uh, April and last year, right? But it's my personal opinion and I'm not there yet for me. What I mean by that is I'm still not quite ready to race out and get a Rolex on the grey market. Uh, I'm getting closer to that as it gets closer to the retail price. Yes, of course I am, but it's not quite there yet, but it's close. It is close. Um, you know, I'm keeping my eye out on this definitely. Uh, because I think there's more room to move. I don't think it's completely got to the bottom of its cycle yet. Now, the issue, of course, is the downturn in the global economy. Like, and it's, it's. I think it's a longer one. Like, we, you know, there was GFC. Although I would say, generally speaking, Australia weathered that quite well and a lot better than other countries. Whereas this phenomenon that's occurring right now because of COVID, we've got war, we've got um, inflation that's kind of a flow on effect from all of those things and low interest rates and all of that stuff. Um, it, it's compounding and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And you know, there's a lot of doom and gloom out there about the economy. 
and I think that's going to continue to have an impact for now uh, on the watch market. So I'm kind of hoping that I will get a bargain at some point. And if I don't, eh, but I'll try. Um, or I might just get that call from the AD and I was straight down there. But, but yeah, I just, I think it's all, it's the, it is the perfect storm. It's definitely slowed down. You know, the craziness that we saw like 12 months ago, I think is definitely gone for now but it hasn't completely dissipated. As I said, people still very much want these watches and you cannot get them in the store. So they have no other option but to buy now and get what they want. And they have to pay a premium for that. So until all those people disappear, um, I'm just, yeah, I'm not too sure. But of course, what should we always do? Buy what we can afford. <laughs> and it's a personal decision and I certainly don't think it's a bad time to shop around for these models and keep an eye out. But yeah, like I said, guys, buy what you can afford. Uh, if it's your Grail watch, start keeping a close eye on it because it might be your opportunity to, to get in and get that watch. Uh, and, you know, I don't think personally that would be a bad thing to do. Um, I just, if it's not your Grail watch, but you really, really want one, which I think is me, uh, then I'm gonna wait because I can I can afford to do that. Uh, but you know, if I desperately wanted and that was the only watch I ever wanted, I probably would have bought it by now. Subject to me being able to afford it. But the one I'm talking about is like the Rolex. Yes, I can afford that. So um, on principle, I'm not ready. <laughs> but yeah, it's quite fascinating. We're gonna continue to see some funky stuff happening in all the markets, including the watch markets. And so I'm gonna do these videos from time to time because I like to learn about it and understand it a bit better, particularly because I'm not a finance person or an economics person, but I do find it all very fascinating. So I want you to tell me your thoughts. Uh, let me know if you're keeping a watchful eye on the market and where you think it's going to go, whether you think it's going down, 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 or it's gonna start bouncing back up and why you think that's so and whether you have bought something already or you're very close to hitting that sold button. Um, yeah, I just, I'm keen to hear your thoughts guys as always. And until next time, stay safe.